Priscilla. Mmm. <laughs> why I made that noise, but I made it. It's done. It's out there. This is written and directed by Sofia Coppola, and uh, it does have audio description if you're willing to rent it right now, um, or if you see it in theaters, if it's still in theaters near you, uh, depending on... It, it is... It's. I mean, it's going to pop up in and around in theaters just because it's Oscar season, and uh, a lot of the times these movies hang on with one or two show times until things have been announced her golden gold nomination is going to make theaters interested in keeping it's entirely possible this movie is playing at your theater that plays sort of like artsy movies at like one show time just for the people who are like who she got a golden globe nomination i'm gonna go check that out uh it has been out for like two months though so it's entirely possible that no but i'm sure it's playing in a couple theaters across america still Without looking, I feel that way. Um, but it does star Kaylee Spiney and Jacob Elordi. And basically only those two people. It uh, does not really dive into any other character in this, <laughs> in the world of Elvis Presley. Um, you just have Priscilla, played by Kaylee, and Elvis, played by Jacob. And that is, that's it. That is it. Um... This is a film that has done pretty well with critics. It's done okay during award season. Kaylee actually won the Best Actress Trophy at the Venice Film Festival. So, and she also has a Golden Globe nomination. She very well could end up with an Oscar nomination. I'm not sure, um, but she could. And uh, that might be a reason that you want to see this. It's released by A24, so every A24 fan out there is going to see this film anyway. That film, that <laughs> that distributor has its own cult, and they watch all the A24 films. So it has a guaranteed audience to begin with, uh, regardless of what the film is about. Uh, but I really enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoyed what Sofia Coppola was going for here. I didn't love everything, and we'll talk about that. Um, but man, this is a, this is a big swing from Sophia and she was absolutely the right director for this part. For those of you who are wondering, is this just some sort of like sensationalist grab? I would point to the fact that right there in the opening credits, and it does read it in the audio description, Priscilla Presley is a producer on the film. She would not be a producer on a film about her if she did not approve of it. Um, I read some comments that Lisa Marie had made before her death about this film, about this project, and uh, she was not approving of it. However, it's Priscilla's story. It's a time period. Um, we don't even, this film doesn't even go far enough into Lisa Marie's childhood for her to really be, she's, I think, like a toddler is as far as she goes. Um, so it doesn't really even go that far. I did watch this with a sighted person. Which also gave me some interesting perspectives on certain things when I was asking certain questions. Um, Sofia Coppola is definitely somebody who uh, is a very intentional director. Um, somebody who has been uh, doing this for a while now. Uh, her first film was The Virgin Suicides. Uh, although she got most of her acclaim for loss in translation, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that was her debut film. Um... <laughs> Some people really like her Marie, An Marie Antoinette. Uh, that's another film of hers that has gotten sort of some later love in life. Uh, I've seen some people sort of rediscover that film. Here, a lot of what she is good with, which is isolationism. Uh, it's what she explores a lot in Lost in Translation with Bill Murray's character, is repeated here in the themes in Priscilla. And it works really well. Uh, a lot of time, Kaylee is on screen by herself. I don't. I'm not sure Kaylee's ever not on screen. That must be nerve wracking for her. <laughs> she's only 25, and I think she's in every scene of this film. I think she has the most screen time, probably, of any actor or actress this year. I don't think the film breaks to show. It doesn't care about the supporting cast at all. They're just faces that pop in and out. Um, whether they play her parents, uh, whether they have, whether they play Elvis's father, 
uh, the people who work for Elvis, Elvis's friends, anybody like that that pops in and out of this film. There's never a scene where Priscilla walks away and we don't follow her. It's always focused on her to the point where um, the person I was talking to, uh, my sighted compadre, uh, was telling me, we were talking about the framing, so I was like, well, how does, you know, how does Jacob Elordi look? We were talking about the look, and, and they were like, honestly, it's a little hard to tell because oftentimes he's not in frame. He's just outside the frame. He's walking outside the frame. The frame is sat on her. So a lot of the times in which it really seems like you would normally frame a dialogue scene to show both people equally, Sophia's got the shot apparently straight on on uh, Kaylee Spaney, so on Priscilla. So that's something that we wouldn't get in the audio description. We don't get in the audio description. Our intentional director choices. For me, what the what I got is a lot of even conversations, but. Um, it would be interesting to note something like that in the audio description at some point to be able to throw that in there. Not that I don't think Laura Post's audio description here from Deluxe is not solid. It's solid audio description. But um, if you really want to send, if you're thinking about how do I go to the next level here, when you see something that is sort of atypical of other films, um, I would say that is that is the case. And I feel like I've seen other films like that too, where there have been characters that have been sort of, uh, you know, they can get kind of blurred out because they're not in focus, but even though they feel like they should be in focus, but we're so focused on one specific character that uh, that, that is the intent of the scene. And I think that's what Sophia is going for throughout the course of this film, is this is all about Priscilla, this is a very nuanced film. It's a very quiet, uh, co complex, complicated film about a young girl who meets a celebrity. He's already a celebrity when they meet, and she's 14, and he is not. <laughs> so for those who are old enough to know, <laughs> old enough to be around... He is not 14 when they meet. <laughs> um, and there are ways that you're going to feel about that. And the film does not hide from those. The film does have, you know, her talking conversations with her parents. Um, although they never have the conversation with her outside of the room. There are a couple conversations where her mom expresses concern over, can't he find somebody his own age? There's stuff like that, but they never actually really talk about... It's funny how this film, which starts, I believe, in 1959, when they first met on a base in Germany, um, that they never fully say it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they never actually come right out and say it. It kind of goes to how beloved Elvis Presley was by so many people at the time. Um... But this film also, this is Priscilla's take on her life. And uh, this is this is basically what she's saying really happened. And there are a lot of scenes in here that do not make Elvis Presley look good. A lot of things that he does. Um, he does attack Priscilla a couple times. Uh, his tempers flare. He has these really wild mood swings. It's a fantastic performance from Jacob Elordi. Um, I wish he was getting more praise for this. Actually, I enjoyed Jacob Elordi better here than I did Austin Butler and Elvis. I felt like Austin Butler and Elvis was something that uh, a lot of Elvis impersonators do anyway. We were just really enamored with the ability for him to showcase in a performance. But um, I think that with regards to Jacob's performance... Jacob is really trying to get into the psyche of Elvis and even the what troubles him, what 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 really uh, darkens him. Sometimes this film can be very quiet. Um, the the choice here of the song selections that they use throughout the film, as well as 
the light score, it's not going to be nominated for score. I mean, this is one of those films where you just have to, you have to try to find the score. Um, but uh, there are some really nice moments where some of Elvis's mu music is played um, and some other songs from the period are played. And uh, they work to really nice effect. Uh, but there are also some moments that it's like we're at a whisper. And Sophia's just keeping you and she's holding your attention. And it's the electricity between these actors that keeps this film going. And you're thinking, John, what's up? You've basically complimented this film all the way up until now. I have. So here's my thought on the film. One of the things that I loved right away, and this is only a, this was only a problem for me by the end of the film, was Kaylee Spaney is 25, and she at that I'm not familiar with her as an actress, not really, not enough. Uh, it's possible I've seen her in something else. I uh, not enough to be to be familiar with her voice, how she acts, any of her other work. So um, it's like I'm discovering her. But I did know she was 25, and uh, at the beginning she's playing 14, and I loved what she was doing with her voice. She had lifted her voice up, so it felt very childlike, um, and uh, very demure, very quiet, uh, thoughtful, and her character doesn't really grow that much. Her voice kind of stays the same. It doesn't really age, although she does. Uh, by the time we're at the end of the film, we're into the 70s. So she's aged at least uh, 11, 12 years. Where, uh, I don't want to say at the point at which the film ends, um, but necessarily the exact year. Um, but, it, it, she, I mean, it go, she goes for a while, and she actually just kind of sounds the same the whole film. And... I don't know. I feel like she would have slowly matured. She was also kind of being manipulated. He started giving her, you know, sleeping pills and uppers and downers. And and um, there's a lot of nuance in her performance. And as Laura points out, her eyes are filled with water quite often. Uh, like she's always tearing up. And I... I think it's a very subtle performance, but I think she didn't think enough about where does my voice go as I'm aging, as I'm going up in life. Because you wouldn't have a 14. 14 is so young to try to keep and maintain a 14-year-old voice. I didn't hear any change in her voice. Um, she does spend half the movie, though, uh, <sighs> scared or um, feeling like her... Like, she can't shine a light, uh, she's lonely, so she speaks very quietly the whole film. But anytime you do hear her voice, it's always kind of this really high-pitched, incredibly youthful-sounding voice that she has from the beginning of the film. And that's the one thing that kind of threw me. It's the kind of thing that you notice as a blind person when you have, when you're tuned in to somebody's actual speech pattern in the film and that's what I had here with Kaylee and uh the one thing that just kind of just gave me a little bit of pause in terms of her performance um I still love the film I actually think what she does with the film is 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 a lot of great acting I just wish she had thought more about how am I aging like what choices am I making to show myself as by the end is a different age how am i as the film progresses what because it's not just in the way that you look it's not just in the way that you move it's also in the way that you sound uh your body starts making changes she's had a baby <laughs> at, the, at a point during the film she would have uh a different sound in her voice and she's maintaining this baby voice and um, I wish, even if it was a choice, even if it was her faking it, even if Priscilla was like, I'm just going to sound 14. So she just kind of faked that voice. 
like a Jennifer Tilly thing <laughs> something for her whole her whole life uh then I, there could have been some scenes where Elvis wasn't there where we got to see her just enough with a voice to show that her voice had matured and then that it was a choice around Elvis to speak like that just some thoughts just a little couple things I just kind of wanted her it's just the film spans such a, a great length of time if this film was in a bubble and it only was like a couple years if this film was just like Sophia uh, was was just Sophia Coppola checking out Priscilla's underage years and trying to say something about Elvis Presley until Priscilla turns 18 then fine uh keep that voice but damn it spends a lot of time aging and uh I I can't really I, I can't be too excited about the fact that that didn't happen because I was really impressed with it in the beginning but <laughs> by the end of the film she still sounds 14 so I'm just <laughs> It's hard to find people who are in their, like, late 20s that sound 14. That's just naturally, you know, it's just, it's not really a thing. Um, it's rare, anyway. Uh, so, that's my thought on Priscilla, my, my biggest negative. Um, otherwise, I thought, I actually really like this. I wasn't sure how much I would like this, or if I would, and critics have been kind of like, eh, on this, like, kind of like... Some people really love it. Some people didn't really get it. Um, I got what it was, what uh, Sophia was trying to do here. I think it's really well done. I think the story is really well told. I think Jacob Elordi is amazing. Um, he, his volatility and the way that he changes from sequence to sequence is fantastic. I mean, he can just blow up. He can be quiet. He can be sweet. He can be mean. He can be anything. Uh, he, they've given him such a wide range of roles that I fully believe that the only reason he's not in the Oscar conversation is because Austin Butler was last year. That's the only reason. <laughs> Otherwise, I think, you know, nominating two people back to back for playing Elvis Presley is probably not where the, where, where people want to go with their life. But, um, this is, this is a performance I noticed and, uh, I, I think he's terrific. Like I said, audio description-wise, it's a very nuanced film. It's a very quiet film. It's a very isolated film. And uh, she doesn't really go many places. Uh, so oftentimes, she's just kind of trapped inside Graceland. Or she's trapped inside her bedroom back in her German, just kind of staring at posters or buying Elvis records and just hoping one day he'll call. Um, so a lot of it is just uh, pointing out her... Her facial expressions, um, the little depressed girl that's always in there, the the girl that uh, doesn't get to speak or speak her mind, the girl that is head over heels for somebody she probably shouldn't be head over heels for, um, and if you want, and whatever else you want to take out of this uh, this film in terms of. Uh, what is Pris what what are Priscilla and Sophia trying to say about starting at this age and letting you know, um, reminding you that this was how it was? Uh, what are they trying to say with that? You can you can interpret it your own way. Um, I I'll leave that up to you. Obviously, I interpreted it my own way. I'm not going to put that in this review, and. I just, I don't know, this is a bold vision, and I liked it better than Elvis, so, um, uh, yeah, I think Baz Luhrmann definitely has the style and uh, everything, but his decision to try to follow uh, Colonel Tom Parker, I think, was the wrong decision for that movie, and I think it's what bogged down Elvis, and I much more enjoyed Priscilla and... Sophia here is laser focused on Priscilla Presley. I mean, Kaylee has one of those rare performances by the end of the year. There is no debate about whether or not she belongs in lead actress. <laughs> She's defining the category of lead actress. For anybody who's ever questioned, am I lead actress? I want to go, do you have the screen time percentage that, <laughs> that Kaylee's baby has in Priscilla? 
Because if no, <laughs> maybe you should be consider. Um, yeah, she defines lead performance. <laughs> so I would not be surprised if she found her way into the race because you can't watch Priscilla and not have an opinion on Kaylee Spaney, um, whether it's good or bad. So uh, for me, I like this film. Just uh, I just wanted just a little bit more to Kaylee. And it's sad to say that because she's won some awards and got some nominations and I feel like I'm fighting against people. I think it's a terrific performance. I just wanted her to pay a little bit more attention to aging her voice over time. Just such a little thing there. But actually, I'm not even going to let that ding the film because I actually really like Priscilla that much. And I think Sofia Coppola's direction of it is, and her choices uh, stand really tall. I do wish uh, we could figure out a way in the audio description to, to get some of these directorial choices in there. Um, but, you know, uh, a lot of times we just can't. We can't really explain shots to people. We can't really explain framing. We can't really explain... Um, how somebody is in focus and out of focus and, and uh, things like that. So, yeah, we don't, we don't always have time. So um, we get what we get. But uh, the film, if you didn't know that, the film that you're going to get is totally different. It just makes it feel like she's uh, sharing so much of the screen with uh, a Lordy, uh, and she's not. She's, he's wandering in and out of frame and, and in and out of, focus in and out of the background and around her she is priscilla i'm giving priscilla an a um this is one of my more favorite films of the year it's under two hours this was a uh, just a surprise for me um i just i loved it i love her choices uh sophia coppola is at the top of her game right now and i hope she gets recognized somewhere for this i hope this film is not completely snubbed at the oscars <sighs> poor Sophia. She hasn't been nominated since Lost in Translation. Anyway, please click that subscribe button. I want to keep talking about audio description in front of the largest group, group of people that I can. So please subscribe. Um, also, uh, I do have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on X, Twitter, or Instagram at MacMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what films have audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. And you can learn more about Laura Post. Um, that's it for me today. I will watch something else and see you guys on the other side.